Welcome to Lifespan News, your source for longevity science updates. I'm your host, Brent Nally. If you missed our last episode, you can watch it by clicking the card above. We encourage you to check the description below for links to these stories. Lifespan News is part of the Life Extend Show, aka X10 for short, and both are moving to X10's own YouTube channel soon. We encourage you to subscribe to the new X10 YouTube channel by clicking the card above. You can also find the link in the description below. Once you're subscribed, be sure to click the notification bell and select all notifications to ensure you don't miss any videos. For our first story, many scientific teams around the globe have been focused for some years now on creating biomarkers that can accurately measure biological age. Having such biomarkers is critical in the development of therapies that target the aging process directly and one of the most promising ways to measure biological age are DNA methylation clocks. These clocks measure the particular changes in methylation. While these clocks aren't conserved from one species to another, there's evidence that the general principles applies, at least in other mammals. Now, researchers led by Dr. Steve Horvath at UCLA have found three different methylation clocks in domestic cats. One of these applies only to the blood samples from cats, but the other two are dual species clocks that work in both cats and humans. To wrap up this story, DNA methylation clocks in cats is important not only for the cat's health span and lifespan, but also to help us better understand our DNA methylation clocks in humans. For our next story, we have more to share about DNA methylation clocks. Results of DNA methylation patterns of 176 athletes and 128 control individuals indicate that the athletes had undergone accelerated aging. There was also a difference between power athletes and endurance athletes. The analysis showed more accelerated aging in the power athletes than the endurance athletes. This is at odds with epidemiological studies which show that athletic training improves longevity. This highlights the difficulty of dealing with molecular clocks and the risk of oversimplifying complex processes and systems. The researchers speculate that the discrepancy might be because of the molecular role of the methylation markers. The researchers found that the main contribution to the epigenetic analysis was greater methylation of two genes, TRIM59 and KLF14. TRIM59 is an oncogene and KLF14 is related to chronic inflammatory response. Given those functions, it's conceivable that lower expression because of greater methylation could be beneficial. But the fact remains that both are widely replicated age predictors used in various age estimation models based on DNA methylation analysis. To summarize, it's a bit puzzling what's actually going on here, so we'll need more studies to unravel this mystery. Moving on, researchers at Seoul National University have developed a method to improve bone repair. The approach uses two gel layers to target the delivery of different drugs. VEGF, a factor that promotes blood vessel formation, was in the outer layer, and BMP4, a bone growth factor, was in the inner layer. In this way, VEGF was released first in order to stimulate blood vessel formation, and then BMP4 promoted bone regrowth. This sequential release enhances bone repair both in vitro and in induced cranial fractures in mice. While the defects treated in this study were still quite small, as is unavoidable in mouse studies, the researcher's strategy shows considerable promise for future studies of larger defects. Hey, are you hungry? I'm hungry. Will you give me something to eat? Please? No? All right. Well, caloric restriction is one of the most reliable methods at increasing lifespan in animals. A team of researchers based at New York's University of Rochester has now shown that mice kept on a caloric restriction diet have improved DNA repair efficiency. The researchers devised a system to measure the activity of a DNA repair process known as non-homologous enjoining, or NHEJ for short. The researchers found that NHEJ efficiency was greater in skin, lung, kidney, and brain cell cultures from mice kept on a caloric restriction diet for four weeks. There was also an increase in the expression of the DNA repair associated genes DNA, PK, and SIRT6. While caloric restriction has proven reliable for life extension in model organisms, the mechanisms behind this have remained unclear. Even if caloric restriction were shown to work in humans, it seems unlikely that most people would be able to maintain such a diet. This makes it important to understand the changes triggered by caloric restriction which likely involve a wide range of signaling pathways and then discerning which of these pathways contribute to increased health span and lifespan. For our final story, the San Diego Nathan Shock Center will be established to study tissue and cellular aging in humans. 
SDNSC will be funded by a $5 million grant over the next five years from the U.S. National Institute of Aging, which is part of the National Institute of Health. SDNSC will have three core facilities which will allow a detailed analysis of human cells and organoids, which are artificially grown clusters of cells that model tissues. These organoids are derived from a unique aging cohort at UC San Diego that is annotated for multiple measures of actual biological age of individuals. In addition, the cores will provide scientific services to the Nathan Shock Center's network and the aging research community at large. The consortium members are the Salk Institute, University of California San Diego, and the Sanford Burnham Presbys Medical Discovery Institute. It's encouraging to see a new institution created to focus solely on human aging. But on the other hand, $5 million is still a small chunk of change to focus on the huge pervasive problem that is human aging. So we hope to be fortunate enough in the future to report on more institutions being created to focus solely on human aging and or other existing institutions shifting their focus to human aging. Stay subscribed to find out. That's all the news for this video. Remember, there's a few quick, simple, and free things that you can do to help us solve the human aging problem. If you haven't already, like this video, share this video on social media, let us know what you think in the comments below, also, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed and you have that notification bell turned to all notifications. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you in the next video at least as healthy as you are now.